quick demo of this tutorial. This is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to implement user registration in MeanStack application. In this part, we will learn how to sign up a new user, password encryption using SAL secret with bcrypt package, validations like required validation, email validation, and mail length validation for password. Also, we will add unique constraint for email. So please watch till the end of this video tutorial. As per your request, Tutorial is divided into two parts. In this part, we will implement the main stack backend in Node.js API. In part two, we will add the frontend client side app using Angular 6. Before starting this video, I would like to ask you a favor. If you found this video helpful, please thumbs up this video. If you are new here, please be subscribed to this channel .net mob and click on the bell icon to get notification about my new videos. Most of the video lesson here also has a written blog post. You can find the link in video description. You can grab code from the as well. What's up YouTube? Welcome to .net mob. In this video and the next video, I will show you how to implement user registration in MeanStack application. In the previous video, we have implemented implemented CRUD operations in a MeanStack application. If you have not seen that video, I have given the link in video description. After user registration, we will discuss login and logout in MeanStack with JWT authentication. So first of all, let's deal with user registration. In this part, I will create the backend or server side in Node.js API. In the next video, we will implement the client side for user registration in Angular 6. In previous tutorials, we have used Angular 5. Currently, we have the latest version Angular 6. So from now onwards, we will be using Angular 6 in MeanStack applications. I'm going to create a MeanStack application inside this project folder. So let me copy this folder path from here. Then here is my Visual Studio Code editor. Go to file, then open folder, then paste the folder path here, hit enter, then select the folder. So here we have opened the folder project. First of all, we have to implement the server side in Node.js. For that, you can use npm init command in your command prompt, or you can use the integrated terminal from this IDE itself. So I'll be using this integrated terminal from this IDE. So here you can see that we are inside this project folder. First of all, make sure that you don't have any space in folder names in this folder path. Sometimes it will create some errors during npm command execution. So better avoid space in folder names. As a first step towards creating a Node.js project, we have to create package.json file. For that, we can execute the npm command npm init hit enter then it will ask some configuration about the project package name will be project then version description entry point will be the root javascript file in this case i will be using app.js you can use whatever you wish then hit enter through the rest finally type yes then hit enter as you can see here, here we have the package.json file. Now let's install required packages for this project. For that, you can do this npm i4 install, then double dash save. First of all, we have express and we have mongoose, then body parser, bcrypt.js bcrypt.js and finally we have the course package hit enter after successful installation you can see the install packages with their versions inside the package.json file under dependencies before continuing with this project let me create a mongodb for that we need to run this command from your command prompt first of all we have to navigate inside the mongodb installation folder been in this directory in your case there might be some difference with this version but most of the case it would be installed inside this c drive then program files in windows systems so first of all we will navigate inside this bin folder using the cd command then we have to run this mongod.exe file with this db path inside this path we will be saving our mongodb datas we have already discussed this trick in previous tutorial 
every time you want to start your mongodb server you have to open your command prompt then run these two commands in order to avoid this repetition i have saved these commands in a notepad then i have saved this file as a bat file in my desktop then from now onwards in order to run mongodb server we just need to run this batch file so here we are starting our mongodb server in order to work with mongodb i will be using this management tool mongodb compass community in latest version of mongodb this management tool mongodb compass is already installed along with mongodb or you can use robo mongoose which is another management tool for mongodb so in my case i'll be using this mongodb compass community here we have the db connection wizard inside that it is filled with default configuration details i have installed the mongodb using default configuration so i just need to click on this connect button here now let's create a mongodb click on create database i will name this database as means stack db so collection name will be users inside that we will save the details of user from user registration form now click on create database newly created database can be seen here inside that we have a single collection users currently it is empty now back to vs code editor now let's check how we can save and make use of configuration details like port number and mongodb uri inside this node.js project for that i will create a new folder here inside that we will create a new json file config.json basically it is a json data inside that we will save configuration data for production and development so first of all we have the property development inside that we have the port number for express so this node.js api in development will be running at port number 3000 after that we have mongodb uri so here we have the mongodb protocol then localhost this is the default port number and here we have the database name means tag db in the same way i have added configuration data for production environment using this production property here we have added test data for port number and mongodb uri we will be updating these details once we deploy this application now we are going to configure this node.js api using these configuration data for that I'm going to add one more JavaScript file inside this config folder config.js. First of all, inside the file, we will check the environment. For that, we can do this. We will save the environment inside this env variable. We have the command line variable node underscore env. We can pass value for this node underscore env when we start this application. For example, if you are going to run this application in production environment we can use this command here node underscore env is equal to production then node app.js for development environment value for this node underscore env will be development most of the case we won't pass value for this node underscore env in development state in that case we will use the default value development so inside this env variable we will have either development or production based on the environment we are running this application now we have to fetch configuration data from this config.json file for that we can require the file here config.json so inside this config variable we will have the json data from this file here now we can extract configuration data based on the provided environment for development we have port number and mongodb uri here and for production we have these much properties so for that we can do this we have the variable env config is equal to config which means this json data and we have to retrieve the property or environment so basically we will have either this data or this data based on the environment now we will configure this node.js api using this configuration data for that we will use process.env key value structure for that we can do this object.keys inside that we have the 
configuration data. So basically this function will return an enumerable collection of keys from these data. So we will have an enumerable collection containing port and MongoDB URI. So basically we are going to iterate through the key collection using the for each function. Inside that we have the arrow function with a single parameter key. Recently I have changed VS Code Editor font into Fura Code FIRA code. It support beautiful features like font ligatures. In a normal font family, this arrow will be something like this. A combination of equal to and greater than symbol. In case of Fura code ligature, it will be converted into a direct arrow like this. In the same way, we have some variations for few symbols also. Here we have the not equal to symbol. In normal font family, it would be a combination of negation and equal to symbol. In, in Fura code font ligature, it would be something like this. Now back to the VS Code editor. Here we have the arrow function with a single parameter key. Inside that, we are going to assign values for this key value dictionary process.env so here it is here we have assigned value for these port and mongodb uri into this key value pair process.env with the same key that we have used here so here we have added configuration details into this process.env so from now onwards in order to retrieve value for port number and mongodb uri independent of environment we can make use of this process.env in other javascript files after all in order to execute this config.js file we have to require this file inside app.js file now let's create the file app.js inside that we will require this config.js so it will execute this file and thereby we will set values for configuration details inside this process.env now let's connect database that we have created inside this mongodb means tag db for that i'm going to create a new folder here i will name this folder as models Inside the folder, we will create another JavaScript file db.js. Inside the file, we need request statement for mongoose with a constant like this. Now, in order to establish a connection, we will call the connect function from mongoose like this. Inside that, we have to pass the mongodb URI. For that, we can use the structure process.env that we have already configured inside this config.js file here okay for development here we have the mongodb uri and for production we will save the mongodb uri here so from this db.js we can access the mongodb uri like this process.env.mongodb underscore uri after making an attempt to connect the database we will call this callback function here with single parameter ERR inside that we will have possible errors so first of all we have the if statement if there is no error we can print the message mongodb connection succeeded otherwise we will print the error message for that here we have the console log message error in mongodb connection instead of concatenating this error object here we have to add proper indentation for that we can do this json.stringify this will print the error message with proper indentation okay now in order to execute this javascript file db.js we have to require this file inside this root file app.js so here we can do this require models db now let me save all of these modifications then let's try to run this application here for that we can do this node app.js hit enter so here we have the message mongodb connection succeeded now let's start the express server along with that we have to configure application middleware so let me add request statement for install packages so first of all we have the express then we have the body parser after all we have the course package now in order to work with express package we have to define this app variable by calling this express function here 
okay after that we have to configure the middleware so first of all here we have the body parser we have called app dot use function which is mainly used for configuring the middleware for the application inside that we have this function body parser dot json so that we can pass json data into this node.js application after that we have the course package so here we have enabled course inside this application this node.js application will be running in a port number and the client side application angular 6 will be running in a different port number in order to communicate between them we have to enable course so that's why we have enabled course with this line here finally we can start the express server like this we will call the function app.listen inside that we have to pass the port number after starting the server we can call this callback function like this we don't have any parameter for this function and here we have the console log message server started at port and here we have printed the port number using string interpolation in case of development it will be 3000 and that of production will be 80. now let me save this file now let me run this application again now we have to stop the previous execution for that you can use the shortcut ctrl c type the command node space app.js hit enter so here you can see the message server started at port number 3000 in this video we are dealing with user registration so we have to save user details inside this mongodb collection users for that we have to define a mongoos model for that i'm going to add a new javascript file inside this models folder i will name this file as user.model.js let's start with mongoose require statement so here we have the require mongoose statement with this constant mongoose now let's declare a variable to define user schema so here we have the user schema object and here we have created an object of schema with this constructor inside this constructor we can define our user schema structure that we can do inside this parenthesis so first of all we have full name it's of the type string like this we have three more properties for user so we have email password and salt secret which is used for the encryption and decryption of password saved inside this field here password now we have to register this user schema object inside mongoose for that we can do this mongoose dot model function can be called as a first parameter we have the model name which is user and here we have the schema object user schema if we save records using this schema it will be saved in a collection with name users schema records will be saved in a collection with plural name of this since we have user here it will use users suppose if we have employee here it will be saved in a collection employees if you want to use a custom collection name you can pass that here as a third parameter here okay for now we'll be using users collection that we have already created inside this mongodb here users now in order to execute this model javascript file we have to add an import statement for the file inside this db.js file so we can do this we have the request statement for this model users.model this db.js file which is already referenced inside the root file app.js here okay now it's time to create a controller for user registration so first of all i will create a folder i will name the folder as controllers inside that we need a new controller i will name the file as user.controller.js inside the controller we just need to define a function for user registration or user sign up for that we can do this module dot exports and then we can name the function which we need to export from this controller i will name the function as register is equal to then we have an arrow function here basically this function is going to handle a request from client side so it will have three parameters request response 
and next for now this function is empty we can expand this function as per our requirement so now we have an empty function which can handle user request next we are going to configure routing inside this application for that i'm going to create a new folder here i will name the folder as routes inside that we need a file i will name this file as index.router.js inside this index router we will route common routes inside this application first of all we have the request statement for express package using this constant express then we have to call the router function from this express constant like this and we will save the return object into this constant router using this constant we will configure routing inside this application okay so now we have the exported function register inside this constant ctrl user i use the prefix ctrl for controllers so now we have the exported function register from this controller inside this constant ctrl user then we can directly configure routing for user registration like this so we have the router constant dot post function can be called and here we have the uri for the user registration operation after that we have the function which can handle the user sign up request from the client side which we have defined inside this user controller here okay so we have configured routing inside this application for user sign up finally we need to export this router constant from this index router for that we can do this module dot exports is equal to router using this exported router constant we can configure routing middleware inside this application that we can do inside this app.js file here it is as simple as this first of all we need the request statement for index router like this we have the rts index constant where we have the request statement for index router that we have created here now using this constant we can configure the middleware like this app.use and we have the prefix for uri forward slash api then we have the constant rts index when user make a request like this forward slash api forward slash this one register the request will be handled by this function which we have specified here which is register function inside the user controller that we have defined here okay so when user make a post request into this uri forward slash api forward slash register with required user details he can add a new user into this application now let's check how this works for that for now inside this register function we just need a console message console dot log inside register function let me save all of these modifications here here we have an active terminal it is already inside this project folder now in order to run this application we just need to do this node space app dot js so here we have started the express server at 3000 and here we have a proper connection with mongodb now we need to test the working of this router post request using this uri forward slash api forward slash register okay for that we can't use this browser so let me open the postman this is a chrome extension to test working of web methods like get post put patch etc for now we need to test the post request and we have started the server at port number 3000 so we need to make a request like this localhost then port number 3000 forward slash api forward slash register now click on send if you check the uh, terminal here you can see the console message inside register function that means that means this router function is invoked 
So we have successfully configured routing inside this application. Along with this register post request, user will send details of new user from client side like user full name that we have already defined inside this user schema here, full name, email, password. This salt secret property is automatically created inside this user registration function here. Okay. So these three properties should be received from client side and we have to save these four properties into this MongoDB that we have already created. We save new users inside this users collection here. Now let's check how to save new user record into this MongoDB collection users. For that, first of all, we have to import or require the Mongoose library here. After that, we have the uh, user schema that we have defined inside this user model.js file here. We have created the schema and we have named the schema as user. So here we have retrieved the registered user schema into this constant user. Now inside this register function, we are going to save a new user record based on the values passed through the request parameter here. For that, first of all, we are going to make an object of this user model. So we can do this user is equal to new user. So here we have created an object of new mongoose model user. Now we can retrieve values like full name, email and password from this request parameter into this user schema here. For that we can do this user dot full name is equal to request dot body contains the values that is passed through this post request here okay similarly we can retrieve value for email address and password finally we have to save this user record for that we can call this function user dot save function here we have a callback function with two parameters error and doc possible errors will be passed through this parameter and newly saved record details will be passed through this parameter doc if there is no error it will return the newly saved record details back to the caller through response like this. Response object dot send function can be called. Inside that we have passed the value of doc parameter. Now if you check this function you can clearly see that we have only passed value for password, email and full name. We have one more property inside this user schema here which is SAL secret which is used for the encryption and decryption of password string saved inside this password field. In order to generate and save this SAL secret we are going to use pre-events in our mongoose model. That means before executing this save function from mongoose we can execute some pre-events inside that we can generate this SAL secret. So let's look how we can do that. In order to generate the random salt secret, first of all we have to add the request statement for bcrypt.js here. So here it is, here we have the request statement for bcrypt.js with this constant bcrypt. Now let's add a pre-event for this user schema. It will be something like this. We have pre-event before executing this save function here, this event will be triggered. So this function will be invoked before the save operation. Inside the function we have called this function from bcrypt.js in order to generate a random SAL secret code. As a first parameter we have the round number which is 10. As a second parameter we have the callback function. After generating the random secret code we will call this callback function. It has two parameters error and randomly generated SAL secret. Inside the function, we will call another function hash from bcrypt.js which basically encrypt the password which is passed from the client side using this SAL secret code. After encryption, it will call another function here. Inside the function, you can see that here we have the encrypted password inside this hash parameter. It will be saved inside this password property and corresponding SAL secret code will be saved inside this SAL secret. Finally, we have to call this next function, then only it will execute the remaining save operation here. And thereby, we have full name, email, encrypted password, and 
SAL secret code which is used to encrypt this password. So these four properties will be saved in our MongoDB. Now let's check how this works. For that let me save all of these modifications here. Then back to the terminal here. Let me stop this execution. For that you can use the shortcut control C. Execute the command again node space app.js. So here we have started express server and we have the success connection with MongoDB. Now back to postman. But this time we have to send details of new user. So switch to body tab here. Then select raw format change to JSON data here. Here we need a JSON data. We have full name is equal to Fiona Green. Fiona Green email is equal to after that we have password now click on send so here we have the response from node.js application here here we have the underscore id which is automatically created by mongodb we have full name email here we have the encrypted password from bcrypt.js and corresponding salt secret can be seen here now let me check the mongodb here Previously it was empty. Now click on refresh button here. So here we have the newly inserted record for Fiona Green. Now let's do the final touch up which is validation. We have to implement validations like required validation, mail length validation, email address validation and we need a unique constraint for this email property also. So let's look how we can do that. We will start validation from Mongo's schema itself. So first of all let me add the required validation for full name so here it is so here we have the required property which is assigned with validation error message full name can't be empty similarly we need to add required validation for remaining email and password now we have to validate the proper format of email address inside this property for that we will use the custom validation for that we can do this user schema dot path function can be called inside that we have provided the email property okay here we have email property we need to add the custom validation for this email property and we will call the validate function inside that we have the value of the property inside this property we have regular expression for validating email address okay now in order to validate the email format inside this email property we just need to call the function test from this regular expression variable inside that we have the value of property it will return true if given value is a proper email address if there is any validation error this message will be printed invalid email now let's check how we can add mail length validation for this password property. In order to add the mail length validation, we can do this. We will have the mail length property here and it should at least contain four characters. And here we have the error message password must be at least four characters long. Finally, we need to add unique constraint for this email address. For that, we can do this unique is equal to true. So here we have defined validation for this schema. Now we just need to handle validation errors outside the schema. Before handling validation error messages, let's look how Mongoose return validation error messages. For that, we need to print the error message in console window. So back to user controller. Here we have the uh, save function inside that. If there is no error, we will print the newly inserted record back to the caller. If there is any error, we will print the error message in console window. Okay. Now let me save all of these modifications here. Now let me run this application node space app.js hit enter. I'm going to make the previous request with same data. Click on send. Now back to the terminal. Here you can see some validation error messages from Mongoose. Password must be at least four characters long. Here we have password one, two, three. Now let me update this password in order to meet the mail length validation. Now I'm going to provide an invalid email address. Click on send. So here you can see the new message invalid email. So these error messages are given or defined inside this user schema here. Now let me remove this password from here 
then make the request again now back to terminal password can't be empty so all of these mongoose validation response you can see a property name which indicate validator error so based on this property we can decide which type of validation error occurs now let me try to make a post request with proper data except this email address is duplicate we have already inserted fiona again with the same email so it should return unique constraint validation error now let me try that back to console here so here we have the validation error because of duplicate key inside this schema we have not given any validation error message for unique constraint that we have to provide from our controller itself in order to identify this types of validation error we can't depend on this name property which is a common value here instead we can depend on this code property here in case of duplicate key error we will have the value of code as 11000 so based on these points we are going to return a properly formatted error message for validations so back to user controller here all of the validation error should be handled inside this else block here first of all we will look for duplicate email address if there is any duplicate email address then code will be 11000 and we will return the status code for 22 and we have the error message here duplicate email address found so here we have given a custom validation error message for unique constraint remaining validation error messages can be handled globally inside this application for that we have continued the request by calling this next function and passing this error object we can handle this global validations inside this app.js file here so let's look how we can handle validation error messages globally inside this application okay for that we have the middleware function from express app.use function can be called inside that we have a middleware all of the requests will be passed through this function inside this function we will check for validation error message if name property inside this error object is equal to validation error then they might have some types of validation error like required validation min length validation etc in those cases first of all we have declared an array variable to store error messages here you can see a for each loop in order to iterate through all errors this function object dot keys will return all keys inside this object inside this for each loop we have pushed each errors inside this array here finally we have set the response status to 422 and here we have send the validation error array inside that we will have one or more error messages so here we have done with validation now let me save all of these modifications here now we need to run this application again so first of all we have to stop this execution use the shortcut control c then use the previous command node space app.js then back to this postmon here then click on send so here we have the uh, error message duplicate email address found now let me violate this mail length for password click on send So here we have the validation error message password must be at least four character long. So instead of the previous error object from Mongoose library, currently we have a properly formatted error message from this Node.js application. Now let me try with a new user. User name will be Tony Abraham. Then we have the uh, email address Tony. One two three at gmail dot com. Then password will be same as before. One two three four. Click on send. Okay. So here we have a success response. So that we have the status two hundred. Okay. And here we have the newly inserted record data. Now let me check the MongoDB. Newly inserted record for Tony Abraham can be seen here. So here we have come to end for this main stack part 1 tutorial in this tutorial we have discussed how to implement node js api backend for user registration 
In the next video, we will discuss how to add a beautiful front end in Angular 6 for this Beanstack application. You can download this project source code from the link given below in video description. For more awesome videos like this, please be subscribe to this channel .net mob. Also, please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues so that they can benefit from this. Have a nice day. Bye.